So I'll share a quick video with you about this uh, closing Colchester I just rebuilt, otherwise known as the Triumph 2000, Colchester Triumph 2000 in England. Uh, got this unit, had a, uh, the inside of a headstock looked absolutely awful. The spindle ran freely, it span freely, but it was an absolute mess in here. Grey, black sludge everywhere. Uh, what had basically happened is this gear right here had uh, the the, bear, the bushings underneath it had failed and it was basically just running freely and it completely chewed up this shaft here. So I ended up stripping everything and uh, the, the, the mess had got in absolutely everywhere. Every bearing apart from the spindle bearings was basically toast in here. Uh, don't know quite why the spindle bearings weren't toast but uh, all the others had bits in them were jammed up. I ended up buying every bearing off eBay. I just searched eBay for a, you know, over a period of two or three weeks. Found new old stock SKF bearings. And basically rebuilt the whole headstock apart from the spindles with all new SKF bearings. Okay, a few other things. Uh, this, uh, when I originally got it, this is an early serial number on this machine. This is like 497 serial number. So this is one of the very first uh, Triumph 2000s. Uh, this had the very early spray bar arrangement. The way the early one worked is it had a single spray bar coming out here and another spray bar coming out here. Now what the problem with this spray bar and uh, closing late, uh, Colchester later changed it to this arrangement here you see here. The early one relied on this section here, this trough filling up first and then oil wicking across these two little channels here and then filling up this area which would then go down this spray bar and feed this area. Now, the problem is this side of the uh, headstock right here. This is the the, the main feet, the main gear is driving the spindle. The large gear back there, and then the slower gear back here. Sorry, the faster gear back here, and the slower gear on this side. So the problem is, if you didn't wait two or three minutes after starting it and turning the pump on before you actually started the spindle, these gears here would likely be running dry. Oh, basic, basic. So I replaced it with this uh, this tube here, which I got off a later closing Colchester from a uh, somebody who was parting one out. Another improvement I made to this uh, system is I fitted a filter. Down here, you can just about see the tank. There's a pump down the bottom. This is a pump. This is an idler driven off the main motor. And what there is is a tube that runs down the inside of the, the headstock. Uh, right down here and drains right into his tank down here. Now this runs unfiltered oil. I went ahead and changed this and put a filter in here. I get this whole filter housing here and it's a uh, hydraulic rated filter. I forget what rating it is but I got this from Tractor Supply. It's a lens filter CP780 I think it is. I got, uh, got this from Tractor Supply for uh, $28 I recall. Tractor Supply also has uh, got this good rated uh, oil rated hose on here. A couple of fittings from my box here. I basically have filtered oil. I got a new uh, sight glass here. My old one was all milky. Uh, another thing I also replaced was the uh, spindle bit, the, uh, the clutch rollers. All the clutch rollers in mine were the very early ones which actually uh, had uh, small needle bearings. Every one of those had broken up. You can just see one of the clutch rollers down there. Right down in there. Those are broken up. The later ones they changed it to was basically a bushing. The outer is a solid outer roller on the uh, on the same steel pin as the uh, the original ones. And the other thing I noticed that was broken. This uh, when I started dismantling it, this gear here, the input gear, closing sorry, Colchester, these things were made in England. They used uh, two Woodruff keys for driving it. And uh, with mine, what had happened is uh, at some point, somebody, believe it or not, had only put one Woodruff key in there, and this whole gear was basically loose and wobbly. And I say this whole gear, you notice I actually have a three spline on here right now. This is the original one, a four, uh, a four, pull, a four, a four groove pulley or sheave. So I'm going to change this one and got a 3 on it for now. And the reason is now I don't have another lathe to machine this with. This was a catalog pulley. And I've got it on a QD bushing or an SD bushing. This is a 1 inch SD bushing. So the shaft itself coming out of here is actually, uh, I think it's like 80 thou, 80 thou over 1 inch. So I welded up the, uh, the Woodruff key grooves. 
as uh, the one remaining one had basically bent over and twisted over. So I welded that, welded up both of them and then machined the shaft down to, back down to one inch. And I've got it held in place with an SD bushing right now, a tape lock bushing. So this thing's going to hold real good. And I've got the lathe operational. So right now I'm going to run with three belts initially. When I've got the lathe operational, I'll chain, I'll machine, machine out the original pulley and uh, for a taper lock bushing. Now this is the very early one. See the early ones basically had a uh, uh, weren't solid. The later Colchester pulleys are solid. This one you can see I've tried machining it out for a small taper lock bushing. I just concluded there just wasn't enough meat on here. So what I'm going to do is I got a spare pulley again off eBay. I'm going to machine that one out and uh, when I've got the lathe operational and basically make a new hub for the uh, the, stack, the factory pulley so I can uh, refit the factory pulley in all four belts. Now here's something interesting, I'm not entirely sure how this has happened but uh, uh, some of them, the very early manuals say this uh, this is your pulley rotation so you need to make sure you get the motor phase right. It will actually work both, the pump will actually pump both ways I found out. So it doesn't matter which way you have the motor going the pump will pump both ways. The early ones, the early uh, manual says, shows the, the rotation is going clockwise, whereas this one and uh, the very, very later manuals show it going counterclockwise. So I'm really not sure what's going on here. Maybe they made a mistake in the early manuals, but you just set it right here and I'm sure it'd be good. Okay, so I'm going to start it up now so you can see exactly what these things look like inside of here. The way this works, I got this set right here. This will stop the oil flowing out this way when I, while I've got the head, while I've got the cover off. Right here, this is your uh, pocket that uh, feeds your uh, your rear spindle bearing, and this tube is what feeds your front spindle bearing. A few other things to note: you have a drain hole here. There's a drain hole here which feeds, drops down into your rear spindle bearing. And then, like I say, on the later ones, you've got this tube here, which basically drops down into this channel. And there's two outlets on the channel. And what those are, those are sat above each of the, uh, the matrix clutches. This one here, this is the, uh, the, the bar which is going to feed this gear. I'm sure if I started to lathe up, I'm not going to start it up, of course. I'm just going to start the pump. I'm sure this gear, as soon as you put oil on this, this will spray everywhere. So there'll be more than enough oil going around here. Let's go ahead and start it up. Look at the side glass. Yeah, that's full of oil straight away. See, we're starting to get oil in here. See, that's feeding into there. Got oil, plenty of oil, plenty of oil going on this gear here. You see in here. You see how long this is taking to fill up here. This one, this side is already full. This side isn't even full yet. Bear in mind, I last run this about 10 minutes ago. You can see I already have oil coming down here and dripping onto this gear here. So combined with this gear and that one, there's plenty of splash going on in here. But of course this wouldn't have happened right now if I was on the original setup. And you see basically, it starts overflowing these two sections here. This one's already overflowing and dripping down onto these gears here. Now another thing, down here, there's another small hole here. What that seems to be doing is just dripping oil down onto the selectors down here to keep the selectors lubricated. Not entirely sure. I feel that that's not optimal. That oil would be better going somewhere else, maybe. Maybe if there's a pipe coming out of here and on top of these selectors, that would be a better choice. But I guess they, I guess they knew what they were doing. So you can see here, this having a clean filtered oil down here, having a filter in here, this makes a big difference. I, can, I know that every, all the oil in here coming out through this pipe is going to be clean filtered oil. Because the only problem with this setup is, you get crap coming off the gears, that's going to fry, fry, fly off the, uh, the top cover and land back in here. That's the only problem with this setup is, and then you're going to be feeding these these are what are going to be feeding your main spindle bearings. I mean, I really disagree with this. I think it's, a str it's a, perhaps a silly way of doing it. For me, a better way would have been to take this pipe here, split it, feed one down here, and feed this down here. 
I might still go ahead and make my modification, but I know folks have been running these for many years without even filtered oil, and uh, you know not had many issues with the spindles. So who knows? All right, final thing. Turn it off. Is the oil I'm using? Forty-five dollars from AutoZone. Just got it just the other day, so can't really complain at that price. I was looking at Mobile DTE. That was like twenty-two dollars a, a gallon was the best I could get. So I think this stuff will be just fine for what I need. Alright, that's it.